Hello everybody, uh, thanks so much for joining me. I'm Archbishop Christopher Prowse here in Canberra. I'm the Archbishop of the Canberra Goulburn Archdiocese and at present I'm the Administrator of the Wagga Wagga Diocese. So dear friends, we're embarking on a, a, a bit of a journey together now and I'm quite excited about this, I hope you are too. Uh, we've called it uh, Heart to Heart E-Seminar. Because people today, we've got restrictions on going outside the house, haven't we? But um, with a bit of a smile on my face, we've got no, no restrictions on going on inside the house. And by inside the house, I mean something quite literally there. I mean inside our hearts. Uh, so the idea is now that perhaps some of you would have a little bit more time, um, perhaps uh, your routine is a bit more flexible, and you might be able to join us. And it's a 10-session ten, ten uh, seminar. Uh, I propose that uh, we meet uh, twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, it'll be about this time, but uh, if it's not suitable for you later on in the day, you can uh, obviously uh, tune in afresh, it'll, but it'll be live at this time. So dear friends, what are we hoping to do? Well, we're hoping the Lord uh, does something new with us in this extraordinary world that we're now in. Uh, even this morning I heard on the news that, uh, of course, surveys, everybody loves surveys, that people uh, generally are finding the, um, the restrictions we have because of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, you know, they understand it, but it, it is making people feel isolated. The word that they used was lonely. Uh, the word that they used was also um, uh, fragile in their life. And... Um, People are tuning in, as we are right now, to uh, the internet more than ever before. So if we can't go to the church, let the church come to you, into your home, into your workspace, wherever you are right now. So I'd like to first of all say welcome, welcome. The Lord wants you to be here. I don't want you to feel sort of that you're passively sitting back there making an adjudication. See, when we've got screens in front of us, we sort of feel that we need to be entertained and we need a lot of information. Well, I think for a start, we have to be able to say immediately when we're talking about things of God, we're not here to be entertained. Yes, there will be a certain amount of information, but we're not here even to be here only for the head. It's a heart to heart. Now, what does that mean? The heart of God speaking to the heart of humanity. So, dear friends, when we think of about that, that that's really a, um, basic fundamental Christianity because Christianity in comparison to the other big world religions, we are an encounter religion. <clears throat> a number of my friends who follow other religions, it's, their religion isn't an encounter religion, sometimes it's an illumination religion, something to illuminate us, mindfulness. But no, no, we're, no, it's an encounter religion. It's an Easter religion. I'll explain that clearly and you'll understand it quite clearly when we look at some scripture texts, particularly after the uh, resurrection. Jesus coming into people's lives, going right into their place <coughs> and speaking to them, saying, peace be with you. At even one stage, he goes to the, uh, to the side of the Lake of Galilee and cooks breakfast for the, the apostles who are startled and he eats, you know, he's not a ghost, it's not a resurrected uh, or a, a, a reanimated Lazarus, no, no, it's, it's the risen Lord. A new epoch of human history begins with the risen Lord and that's why we say it's an encounter religion. So friends, we want to go deeper than ever before. I, I think about um, the famous saint who was only made a saint last year in uh, 2019, I think it was October by Pope Francis, Saint John Henry Newman. And John Henry Newman, <coughs> his uh, motto when he became a, a bishop was, heart speaks to heart. And this man, Englishman, was the greatest really English theologian we produced in probably in the past 2000 years, English speaking, uh, and wrote in English. He was a convert to Catholicism. He was an Anglican and slowly but surely converted to Catholicism. And uh, he, he was, uh, his whole life was virtually the whole of the 19th uh, century, the 1800s. And Heart Speaks to Heart 
was his summary statement to this great English-speaking theologian of all that Christianity means. Heart speaks to heart. Heart to heart. So let's take the lead from a great um, exponent of the Catholic uh, understanding of our doctrine and of our teaching. It is a relational religion. It's a witness to the resurrection religion and it's a heart speaks to heart. Of course, we haven't just made this up. This, this is uh, very much in our Psalms <coughs> uh, coming from our Jewish background. So, I mean, the Psalm comes to my mind and we could perhaps use this as a bit of a prayer to begin our seminar. Psalm 42. Uh, Psalm 42. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God. When can I enter and see the face of God? Then further down, why are you cast down my soul? Why groan within me? Hoping God, I will praise him still, my Saviour and my God. Here it is, everyone. Deep is calling on deep. In the roar of your torrents, your billows and all your waves swept over me. Why are you cast down, my soul? Why groan within me, hoping God? I will praise him still. Oh, this to me is a wow psalm. You know, the best way of going deeper with the Lord is by starting with the psalms. Jesus himself would have known all these psalms off by heart. His mother and Joseph would have taught him. Being an observant Jew, the psalms are the prayer of Jesus, the prayer of the Old Testament, the Jewish prayers which we as Christians take on. And each psalm, that was, that was number 42, the Psalm 40 is a very similar one of trusting in God. Um, here it is, Psalm 40. I waited, I waited for the Lord. He stooped down to me. He heard my cry. I trust in the Lord. Uh, I delight in your will, O God. Your instruction lies deep within me. Deep within me. That's what I'm saying. Religion... Christianity is a deep religion, deep calling on deep. So I'm not here to tickle your head, but I hope what happens will be nourishing to your mind. I'm asking, would you allow me to lead you on a journey, a little Camino? We're not going to Spain. I know a lot of you have gone to the Camino and the different pilgrimage walks geographically. We can't do it at the moment because of the coronavirus pandemic, but we can make a pilgrimage within, within your house, within your heart. They say the, the longest distance anyway is between one's mind and one's heart, so we're making the big, the very big pilgrimage, uh, the heart-to-heart -heart one. That's all I want to say on the general introduction, but I'd like to make some other introductory remarks. In fact, today, <coughs> today's session is introductory setting the scene. Um, the journey within, can I make a few observations? I don't know if you've got, uh, it's good to have a, a pen and a piece of paper, you might want to jot these down or look at, the, replay this later if you feel what I'm about to say is helpful to you. I'm just going to give some basic benchmarks as um, all Christians would say, well look, on a Christian journey, these are the sort of um, compass points. So the first compass point I think is always, you know, we go to the Bible, the scriptures, and the wonderful compass point here is in Matthew's Gospel on the 28th, the, uh, the 28th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. This is after the resurrection and um, immediately after the resurrection. So here's Mary Magdalene and some others. They go to the tomb and there's an angel there and the angel says, what are you, who are you looking for? And this is what the angel says. He's not here, he's risen from the dead, just as he said. And then the angel says, come and see. Come and see the place where he lay. But I love that expression, come and see. 
there's the invitation, come and see. Then a few verses back, uh, further on, so that's, that's verse uh, 6, on 28th, of, 28th chapter of Matthew, on verse um, 10, uh, Jesus says to them, Do not be afraid, go and tell the others. And for them to meet me at Galilee, I'll see them there. Go and tell. Put those two together, everybody. I think there's the first benchmark of Christianity. We are a come and see and a go and tell religion. Now, over these weeks, I'm asking you to come and see. Let's allow the Lord to take us on this deep inner journey, not so that we become inward looking. No, no, no. So that we become better at going and telling as missionary disciples. It's an inward motion, but with an outward motion. Both. First point. Second point. Come as you are. There's a song there. I was, I, I'm not such a good singer, so I won't sing it to you. But you know that famous, uh, well-known song we sing it now. Come as you are, that's how I love you. Come as you are, be quiet. That's it. Please don't come, don't come with, the God, with the person you want to be in the future or the person you have been in the past. Just come as you are the way you are today. Come as you are. No pretense. Just be yourself. Because Jesus, who lovingly looks at you, knows your true self. So secondly, please don't put on a pretense. Just humbly, uh, in a sense of repentance and conversion, just come as you are. Warts and all, as they say. Third point, um, it's not so much about just simply loving Jesus. These days are going to be truly loving Jesus. I love that word, truly. Loving Jesus, truly loving him in the difficult times as well. So that's the third point. A fourth point, St. Teresa of Avila, one of the greatest uh, Catholic mystics we've ever produced in the fifth, uh, 16th century. She uh, was born in 1515 and went to 1582. Where, uh, the greatest prayer, I suppose, this Carmelite nun, she said when she thought about her prayer life, she said, I'm a plant of slow growth needing a lot of watering. That's, she's just coming to the Lord as she is, come as you are. I'm a plant of slow growth needing a lot of watering. This is one of the greatest prayers we've ever produced, so, so humble. And she's talked about the four ways of getting water. She said, I need a lot of watering because of this plant. She says there's four ways, four stages, four steps on retrieving the water for the spiritual life. The first one, she says, you need a bucket to get the water. After a period of time, maybe the place where you get the water, there's a pump. So you don't need the bucket, so you need the bucket, but the, you don't have to dip down. There's a pump there, and you, uh, that, that makes it easier. Thirdly, later on, irrigation. It makes it even easier. You don't have to go up there, it'll, the water will come to you. And fourthly, she said that deeper stage, the highest stage of prayer, is waiting for it to rain. Waiting, waiting for the water. Can you see, the more she went on with her prayer life, the more her prayer life became something that God does in her, not so much that she does for God. When you get a bucket, you have to get the bucket, buy the bucket, get, water, get the water out. And at the end, one, two, three, four, you just wait for the water. Waiting, surrendering. I think that's, that helps me a lot. Maybe it helps you. I'm just sort of throwing out the seeds. Uh, maybe some seeds will help you, others will not. So everybody, just to sort of draw things to conclusion on this first section. Everybody, um, today's the introductory session, setting the scene. When we meet again Thursday, uh, I'm going to, the topic is, what is needed practically for the inward journey? The practical... Australians are very practical people. So what is required practically? Thirdly, what is needed inwardly for the journey, the Camino, pilgrimage, heart to heart? Then after that, topics are as follows. A God who is love, Christ saves you, he is alive, the Holy Spirit gives life. These are topics coming from Pope Francis. God's microphone, the poor, missionary disciples, and Mary's 
Mary the first amongst the faithful. So, uh, there's an outline of the topics. We're now coming to the conclusion of the first phase of three phases every time we meet. In a moment, we're going to have a bit of a quiet time and you'll see up on your screen three questions that will explore a little deeper from your point of view what you uh, bring to the seminar today and over the next few weeks. Um, we'll have a little bit of silence, not a great deal. If you want to share already some response that you make, we've got the chat room there, haven't we? You could type a few things in there. It's not so much if you want to ask a question, you can. But I invite you over the next period of time if you want to make any response. So it's a bit interactive. I can see the starting to come through right now. Uh, so in the next 15 minutes, we'll have three questions will come up. Um, then we'll have uh, some quiet time. We'll have some time when uh, I can respond perhaps to some of the issues that are, you're presenting. And then the third one, really, the ball is entirely in your court. The third one can happen or not happen. The third one, I think it'd be great if it could happen, is that you take the initiative and perhaps contact a few of people that you know or would like to join a little group with you. Um, I'll leave it up to you how many of the group would be, but I think it'd be great if you could form a little Zoom group. We all can't gather, unfortunately, together physically, but uh, because of the restrictions with the pen, uh, but, but with the pandemic, but we can form a little chat room or Zoom or uh, whatever, whatever FaceTime, whatever two or three people. It'd be good to be able to share with somebody how you're going with this seminar so that you learn from them and they learn from you. Perhaps talk about some of the things I've said or some of the things I haven't said that comes to your mind. And um, we'll just see how that builds up. So that's what it's about, that's what's happening and what we're about to do now, everybody, is to have the three questions. So let's have, there they are, they're already up there. Thank you, I've got Janine and Jasper here looking after things. So. Review your journey with the Lord so far in your life. What are the highs and the lows? Just think about your answer to that question. Review your journey with the Lord so far. What are the highs, some of the highs and the lows? So I'm not talking just about now, but over your life. Where have you come from? with the Lord. Review, a bit of a review. Look over. Don't hide anything. Don't lie to yourself. We're, we're, great, we're great on deceiving ourselves in regard to the spiritual life. Say, well, this happened. Uh, some highs, some lows. Secondly, what does the expression heart to heart mean to you in regard to the spiritual life? I've mentioned to me, what does it mean to me? What does it mean to you, heart to heart? I hope it's not just something purely sentimental. I mean, it's a relational religion, but I wouldn't call Christianity a sentimental, sugary religion. I mean, how can you have the crucifix? Let's call it sugary and sentimental. This is, this is crucified love. It's struggle. There's, there's conflict. There's a heartache. There's wounds, the Lord's wounds. And what do you hope the Lord will gift you with during this e-seminar. I think it's always good to have some intentions. Um, it's a bit like uh, Lent, you know, what do you hope to do for Lent? What, what do you hope this uh, seminar, e-seminar will change you? What, what areas would you feel are challenges in your life that you'd like the Lord to chip away? Actually, that's a lovely expression, chip away. It reminds me of uh, Michelangelo, the greatest uh, sculpture that God's ever given life to. And there is the religious sculpture with the Pietà and the other ones. He would chip away in a remarkable way. And he, he would say, everybody, I think this is really good for the spiritual life when we talk about what, what you think the Lord might do. He was, I'm releasing the angel within this block of marble. I'm releasing the angel within. It's entrapped in the marble. I'm releasing the angel. I can see the image of what is going to come out. I'm just chipping away. I think that's, that's a wonderful image of what Christianity is in the spiritual life. Jesus allowing the Lord to chip away 
the dross, uh, the, the, the things that aren't really important, and releasing in us the image of himself that he sees in us. We are made in the image and likeness of God. Wow. So what would you like to think about uh, your response to there? So let's have a look. Okay, there's a few things coming through. Oh, good. And, and there's uh, Mary from Ungari. Well, that's in the Archdiocese of uh, Canberra, Goulburn. Welcome, Mary. Well, that's up in the northern part. Hope you had a bit of rain up there. And Julie, peace from Kilsyth. The only Kilsyth I know is the one in Victoria. So um, welcome. And uh, another Mary. It's great. Oh, that's oh, that's Mary from uh, Ungari. It's great. Good on you, Mary. Tell others about it. And Philip, thank you. You're from this parish. Uh, you're listening positively. Um, yes, thank you. Just if you wish to bring some things in, but as as we're now got the questions in front of us. Uh, we will have a little bit of quiet time now. If you want to do some chat with me, well and good, but I'm not going to wait here for you. But I think it's probably better for us just to stop for a moment. I've been speaking for about 20 minutes or so. That might be far too much. But um, can you just look at those three questions for a moment? We will have a silent pause for a moment. I won't be jabbering along. But look at those three questions. So I'll ask them again and pause for a moment after each one. Review your journey with the Lord so far in your life. What are the highs and lows? How would you respond to that? What does the expression heart to heart mean to you in regard to the spiritual life? What do you hope the Lord will gift you with during this e-seminar? Yes, good. Maybe you want to write those down and think about them between now and uh, Thursday. So I'm getting some responses back there. So here's Rosemary from Maruya Parish. I was just speaking to your parish priest this morning. Uh, Rosemary, you've got there, that the Lord might chip away at the stone in my heart and release the angel. Wow. Rosemary, you've said it on behalf of us all. We hope that the Lord will chip away the stone in our hearts. Isn't that beautiful from the Old Testament? I will replace the heart of stone and make a heart of flesh. So that's a great opening intention for our e-seminar together. Oh, Mary, you, you think it's great that the church comes into your lounge room. Are we in your lounge room, Mary? I hope so. <laughs> I hope more so that all of us are in each other's hearts at the moment. You, uh, this is the journey within the house and within the home of your heart. Uh, it's deep calling on deep. And Julie, uh, for me, it's where I am at. I see Jesus offering his heart wholly while I am nowhere up to meeting him halfway. It's been a barren time in faith just of late. Well, Julie, thank you so much for being so honest. That you Come as you are. If it's been a barren stage in your heart, that's where you are. That's where the Lord can love you. And you can love God. Actually, I find over the years, everybody, quite a lot of people say that I've, I've, uh, it's very difficult in my faith. Some of the greatest saints have said most of their life, of spiritual life, has been barren. The word you use is what they often use themselves, uh, Julie. So you, perhaps, um, perhaps you're further down the spiritual life than you think. I mean, Jesus himself 
came closer to the Father, didn't he, in the, in the 40 days in the desert before his public ministry. He found the Lord in the desert. Jesus came from a desert community. Australia is largely in a desert. So let's find the Lord there. Philip, important point. Uh, voice of heart includes emotions, but it's greater than emotions. And discerning the difference is crucial. That's right. Good. What's in the heart? Uh, sentimentally, people talk about the heart as the centre of the emotions. That's right, Philip. But uh, when Christians, uh, using our Jewish background, talk of the heart, they mean the centre of the person. It's not so as a sentimental, a sentimental centre, but biblical heart is the very core of the person. That's what we're talking about there. So thank you, Philip. That's good to make that distinction. Melissa, um, lows when Jesus was not part of my life, but on highs now with him during my personal prayer every day. Great. Melissa, you're praying every day. Well done. It's, it's a big discipline to do that. Julie, um, in regard to question three, I will always be a cradle-to-grave Catholic, but, uh, went, uh, but want to recapture a sense of closeness, wonder and awe once more. Thank you, Julie. I think we all would say that. I like the words you use there, Julie. Closeness, wonder and awe. They're all Holy Spirit words. Closeness, wonder and awe. Beautiful words, Julie. Melissa, my heart to heart happens every morning with my love, with my love, Jesus Christ. I speak, he listens, and then answers to my prayers. Interesting there, Melissa, I speak, he listens, then answers to my prayers. Okay. What about if he speaks first, Melissa? If you, perhaps you, that's another way. I think it's always better... We'll talk about this in the next few days about um, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And then we make a response. But it, it's a dialogue, so it can be both ways. Well done, Melissa. You're sharing from your heart. Thank you so much for your kindness. Uh, John and Bev, sorry we can't see the three questions. Oh, I, <laughs> well, I read them out a few times, John and Bev. Anyway, they'll be on the website, so don't worry. Uh, Janine will put them on the website. Um, Mary, uh, John and Bev, you are probably not watching through the YouTube. Oh, well, I don't want to get caught up in all this, uh, on all this practical chat there. Okay. All right. I think we might start finishing up there. I think that was... A, we've just done this for the first time. I, I hope it's working all right for you. But this is a way that we can dialogue together. I, I must say I'm not particularly interested in the mechanic side of it. I'll leave that to others. But I am interested to know how you're going in your heart to share... Uh, personally but not intimately share personally with us so Mary you might have the last word here um, I am so grateful that we are being fed through so many different avenues during this difficult time I did not think we would be able to have daily mass of this kind of feeling I am loving this they are so Mary O'Neill with a great Irish Catholic name we're all loving this we're only just starting so this is the, this is where I think there's little miracles about to happen. So listen, everybody, why don't you tell your friends about this? We can build up a bit of a congregation. And uh, it, it's global. It's because it's live. It's going anywhere in the world. Let's see what happens. What would God do? What, what can, how can God use us? How could he use me as your servant bishop? With a friendly smile, I'm here to instruct you, but I'm also here to learn from you and for you to instruct me, all of us heart to heart. So I'd like you to think just now before we finish, do you or do you not think about doing a third part? Because it's entirely up to you. So the idea would be, wouldn't it, that you'd have to think, OK, I might... Uh, this takes you out of a certain passivity when you're in front of a screen. You, you basically say, well, I, I might have to make a few calls to see if person A, B or C might want to join me. And we could join you twice a week for 10 weeks. Oh, no, not for 10 weeks. It's for five weeks, but 10 sessions. So it's over uh, two a week. We could join the bishop and then we could have our own little faith sharing group afterwards. Uh, and wouldn't that be great, everybody? So that once we get back to our normal, once all these restrictions have gone, we can we, we form new friends electronically. You can invite them around eventually for a cup of tea or something. <laughs> And uh, if, if they're nearby, maybe they're not. Good. 
Many thanks, Archbishop Christopher, for your time. A great chance to connect, reflect and pray. Thank you. That's the Marist Foundation. Good. Well, I'm thinking of the Marist today because today is uh, the feast of the great martyr of Oceania and Peter Chanel, St. Peter Chanel. And uh, we might conclude with a little prayer and invoke his presence, given the fact that the Marist Foundation have uh, reminded me of this. So let's all pray together in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's just pause for a moment in silence and thank Jesus for this start that we're making. And let's pray that Mary very much is with us and leads us to Jesus, her Son. And let's say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I'd like to conclude with a beautiful prayer from the saint that I mentioned earlier, John Henry Newman. And uh, I think this summarises uh, our first session together. Thank you so much. I think we've made a great start, but we're just starting. And uh, when I read this last night, I thought, oh, I might share this as a concluding prayer. So this is uh, John Henry Newman, the man that was made a saint by Pope Francis October in 2019 in Rome, a convert from Catholicism, became one of the greatest English-speaking, English-writing theologians of the centuries. And uh, he, his life really spanned the whole of the 19th century. And he prays this. My God, you know me infinitely better than I know myself. How little I love you. I should not love you at all, except because of your grace I can. It is your grace which has opened the eyes of my mind and enabled them to see your glory. It is your grace that has touched my heart, heart, and brought upon it the influence of what is so wonderfully beautiful and fair. O oh my God, whatever is nearer to me than you, things of this earth, the things more naturally pleasing to me, will be sure to interrupt the sight of you unless your grace intervenes and interferes in my life. Isn't that wonderful? Grace interfering. Keep my eyes, my ears, my heart from any miserable tyranny. Break the bonds. Raise my heart. Keep my whole being fixed on you, Lord Jesus. Let me never lose sight of you. And while I gaze on you, let my love of you grow more and more every day. We make this and all our prayers through Christ the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you on Thursday. God bless.